This video is a witness to confute the uh, heresy of the polarity, polarity of the Mormon gods and by logic, by testimony and by, by the word of God just to show that the uh, Mormon, Mormon church, the Mormon heresy is of the devil, it's not, it's not of the Holy Spirit, it's not of Jesus Christ, it's not of the word of God. Uh, I'm going to start with a quote from Elder Bruce R. McConkie uh, in 1982 in the Enzyme. Elder Bruce R. McConkie has also testified that Christ is the creator and redeemer of worlds so numerous that they cannot be numbered by man. Brackets, Christ and the Creation was the title in the Enzyme, June 1982, page 10. Elder McConkie's further attested, when the prophets speak of an infinite atonement, they mean just that. Its effects cover all men, the earth itself and all forms of life thereon, and reach out into the endless expanse of eternity. And through the power of his atonement, the inhabitants of these worlds, the revelation says, are begotten sons and daughters unto God. DNC. 76 uh, verse 24 which means that the atonement of Christ being literally and truly infinite applies to an infinite number of earths Mormon doctrine um, Salt Lake City Bookcraft page 64 65 now like, like um, you could you to consider the uh, Mormon plan of salvation that there's many fathers and they come to earth to experience the plan of salvation and to experience sin and overcome sin through the Redeemer now if Christ is an infinite Redeemer he's the father of all the fathers before the fathers which is a oxymoron it's, it, it counteracts itself, it cancels it out itself, because Christ was the son of a father, not not the father of all fathers, he was the son, according to Mormon doctrine. And if if the Mormon fathers, the polarity of fathers, are infinite, and that they have to go through a plan of salvation to become immortal, because they sin, um, that, 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 therefore that means that there must be a, an infinite God to start with because you can't have um, the first father going through, through the plan of salvation himself to fall, fall from grace and then go through the infinite atonement of Jesus Christ the Son who's not the Son, so who who who's was his father? It's completely nonsense. It's completely untrue. So who was the first god in the Mormon, according to the Mormon Church? There must be an eternal god without beginning and their end for there to be a god from the start. To have a if if he was to have children, to come to earth to go through the plan of salvation as his father did, and so forth and so forth. So there must have been a first god. To create, you know, to be infinite and without beginning or end. So um, it cannot possibly tally. Um, so the fathers had to sin and go through the infinite Redeemer Christ, but Christ is the son of what the Mormon teaches, is the current Heavenly Father, or of the um, spirit children of the Mormon Church. Who came to earth to go through the same plan so if Jesus is the only sin, sinless one he must be the father of all all the Mormon fathers which, which, which he can't be so it's completely erroneous it's completely tribe so that um, that needs to be considered um, Jesus Christ said a uh, you are from below, I am from above, your father, you're, the, you're, you're of the devil, you're uh, sinful, 
and that, that that's a true statement we're all born in sin we're all sin, sinful and only God is holy and eternal and infinite and there's only one God God the Father God the Word and God the Holy Spirit and Jesus came in the fullness of the Godhead bodily that's what his word teaches that's what Jesus taught so uh, God is infinite without beginning or end uh, just like the, the plan is, like the true plan of salvation it's it, it's eternal it's now and the only way to enter into eternity into the kingdom into the father is through the son through the eternal word through the saviour through the door through the through life through the way the truth and the life no man can come if unto the father but by me so um, it's completely um, anti-Christ. Um, I'm not. I am pro pro Christ, which is um, refutes Mormonism. Mormonism is against Christ. I'm not against Mormons. I'm just against the doctrine, as 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 is the Word of God. Uh, just a few more scriptures to consider. I've marked down. Um, Genesis 2 if I can find it so I'm reading from a um, an essay I wrote um, on this very subject but it's too long to cover because it covers the uh, Godhead and it, the uh, nature, the eternal nature of God and the difference between the the true nature of God without beginning or end, whereas Mormon the Mormon doctrine teaches that uh, God had a beginning, which is erroneous because uh, God's eternal; He can't have a beginning or end. There's no God beside God. Uh, considering uh, pre-existence, there's no pre-existence. Um, only God, Jesus, is the only begotten. The only begotten of the Father, so there was no spirit children come to earth before um, I, the Lord said to Jeremiah. This is what the church uses as to prove uh, that um, there's a pre existence in Jeremiah 1 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now that's uh, taking that verse out of context. Because God's eternal and all things are before him. Before he created Jeremiah in the womb, before I formed thee in the belly, created, I knew thee. So God knew all things from the beginning, from eternity. And his creation, he knew Jeremiah would be sanctified as a prophet before Jeremiah was even created. Because he knew the whole plan of salvation from beginning to end. And he knew who would accept his son and who would reject his son. And Jeremiah was a prophet to be uh, to be called as a prophet. Jeremiah didn't know that uh, in the pre-existence because there was no pre-existence because before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So God had a knowledge of Jeremiah before He formed him in the belly, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Genesis two seven. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of the life and man became a living soul. So that completely refutes uh, the pre-existence and extra biblical revelation because the scriptures cannot be broken. So you can't have two, two scriptures. It's either, there's only one word and that's, that's the um, preserved in the King James Bible which the the Mormon Church claims to hold to, but it also holds to her the heresy of the Book of Mormon, which doesn't agree with the uh, Old and New Testaments, only partly, only part bits and bits and pieces. Some parts are correct, uh, and and some parts aren't. <coughs> um, uh, I want to read some scriptures of uh, the testimony of uh, of God in Isaiah. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, this is Isaiah 44, 24. 
Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretch forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by, it, by myself. Let's look at some more. Uh, then there's many testimonies of God in Hosea, um, Isaiah, Isaiah 45, 5, I am the Lord and there is none else, there is no God beside me, I girded thee, thou thou hast not known me. So there's no other gods, there's no plurality of gods, there's plurality of personages in the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but there's only one God. Jesus came in the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and he's equal with the Father. All right. Isaiah 44, 6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. The Lord said before Abraham was, I am. Um, the scripture this morning uh, Isaiah 43 uh, verse 11 I even I am the Lord and beside me there is no saviour uh, verse 25, I, even I, am he that blotteth out the transgressions of my own, for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins, talking to Israel. Put me in remembrance, repent, let us plead together, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Repent and believe, that's the, old te that's the same as in the New Testament, as the, the Old Testament is faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ, in God, in Jehovah, in Jehovah God. Now the Mormon Church teaches that Jesus is Jehovah and God the Father is Jehovah. It teaches two things, you see, because it's a lie. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father have sinned and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore I have profaned the, uh, profaned the prince of the sanctuary, and have given Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproaches. Let's go to you. Look at um, Isaiah 45, verse 22. Look unto me, and be ye saved. So that's faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. All the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. Let's turn to Hosea. Um, Hosea 13, 4 Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt and thou shalt know no God but me for there is no saviour beside me. So there's only one saviour, only one Lord, only one redeemer and only one God. And Jesus came in the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Uh, God the Father is a consuming fire. Jesus came in the person, the person of a man. Uh, let's find um, uh, this, here's here's what the Lord taught about um, uh, mankind. Uh, John eight twenty three, and He said unto them, Ye are from beneath; I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. So that's a testimony that uh, Jesus, the Creator, God created all thing, things through His His Word, through His Son, 
And he said, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. So there's no um, polytheism, there's no polarity of gods. Uh, Hebrews 7.3, without father, without mother, without descent. Have neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, by the priest continually. Isaiah 9, 6 For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So Jesus is equal to God, God the Father, because he is God. Um, wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Word of God. Uh, Isaiah 44, 8. Fear not, neither be afraid. Have not I told you from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God, I know not any. Uh, Psalm 90 verse 2, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever, had, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So this, all these scriptures refute um, what the Mormon church teaches. Deuteronomy 4 verse 24, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. He's jealous. Jealous to be glorified, jealous to be known, jealous to be feared. He's not a polarity of gods who spends most of his time having sexual intercourse. It's completely uh, wicked and it's a man-made doctrine. Doctrine of devils um, in the hearts of mankind. John verse 10, John chapter 10 verse 30, I and my Father are one. Uh, John 14, 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So the Father is in the Son. So if there's many, 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 many fathers, Jesus would have said, the fathers are in me and I am in the Father's. He didn't say that. He said, But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. And God is a consuming fire. He's not He's not um, a person. He's a consuming fire. So he's not a polarity of gods. He's one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. One God and one Lord. For there be three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, one God, not multiple gods, one God. Uh, the Mormon Church teaches uh, blaspheme, blasphemy, it's heresy. Ephesians 1, 16 to 23, cease not to give thanks for, uh, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us Lord, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him on his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and have put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Completely um, wipes out what the Mormon Church teaches. Colossians 2.9 For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 
uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, but, let, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Mark 12, 29, and Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Before Abraham was, I am. So God's eternal, everlasting to everlasting, eternal, no beginning or no end, the Alpha and the Omega, not having a beginning and coming to earth to sin, you know, God's holy, he, did, he didn't need to sin. So if, why, why would a, um, a pre-existent spirit need to come to earth to experience mortality and fall down from grace? If he was sinless and holy, he wouldn't sin, because it's not in his nature to sin. So the Mormon church teaches that God is unholy, he comes to earth to experience mortality, to become holy through Christ. It's completely claptrap. Um, and this shows how um, blinkered the, uh, you Mormons are. A testimony in Psalm 138 verse 2. I will worship towards thy holy temple. Coming from a... And it, this is coming from a Jew. I um, praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Deuteronomy 6 4 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So the um, Psalm 138 I, uh, magnified thy word above all thy name. John 1 that Jesus is the word, his written word, and him, his, uh, the living word is magnified thy word above all thy name so he's put his word above all, all above all thy name right let's get to few more scriptures so the Mormon um, church cannot be true there cannot be a plura 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 plurality plurality of gods because it, it's counter to counter to God counter to his nature and counter to his church his church is a spiritual church a living church it's not an organized church it's um, a church of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit indwelling in the believer and the believer are the body of Jesus Christ who who he purchased by his holy precious blood and gave and gave the testimony and the knowledge through the Holy Spirit. Um, where's our, all right, I'll read a few scriptures to clarify. That the the church is a spiritual church. It's not an organised religious body of priesthood with uh, deceivers and devils, because it is. The Mormon's father is of the de uh, is the devil, the father of all lies. Ephesians two twenty two, in whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit, not gods through the Spirit, God through the Spirit. First Thess Thessalonians four eight, he therefore that despiseth despiseth not man but God, who have also given unto us his Holy Spirit. So not by the um, laying on of hands, that was only for the, the Israelites in the establishing of the, of the church at the beginning. 
2 uh, Corinthians 3.3 3, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. I've read that one. I've read that. I've read that. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom all things are all things and we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him I think I read that one as well so that I'm going to wrap it up now because I've covered everything I wanted to cover regarding the eternal nature of of the Mormon the Mormon church versus the, the true and living God so um, there cannot be, it cannot be the true church, there is no pre-existence, the true church is a, um, a spiritual church and I, I will leave some scriptures on the editing to um, f further state and uh, reinforce my witness against heresy, the erroneous teaching of and the deception because it's a deceptive spirit keeping people in bondage and, and I wanted to reach out to those people to invite them to examine and think through and pray and study seek the seek the word of God trust only the word of God the scriptures to um, break the shackles from your eyes to break the the hold the satanic hold it has on your mind and on your heart believing these liars believing these um, false teachings holding you to a corrupt system that will destroy your soul it will destroy your life and you'll be um, eternally judged and you will not be saved you will go to hell and you will feel foolish in the afterlife when you realise you've been uh, deceived and I'm um, not saying this to attack Mormons I'm saying this because um, Mormonism attacks the true faith and gospel the simplicity of Christ and I would earnestly contend towards you to seek that testimony and to seek eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ and break the chains and shackles that hold you to a lie because uh, cause the truth will set you free, the Lord's grace will set you free, the word of God will set you free by the grace of God, given by the words given by grace and it's a spiritual book and you won't understand that book until you've received Christ and you've been born again and I'd um, invite you to um, be saved and be born again and then know and to seek the knowledge of the testimony of um, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And you may know for yourself that you, you will you receive eternal life and you will know you're saved and you will know the truth, you will know the church, you will be of the church. And you will be uh, baptised into the church through the operation of Jesus Christ. And, and you would be given the Holy Spirit to uh, lead you into all truth. To testify of the truth in the word. And to teach you error. Truth from error. Which will help you grow. Which will help you walk in faith daily. Help you grow in faith daily. You will be justified. And then you would live a sanctified life day to day through faith in the simplicity of Jesus Christ and I leave that testimony there in, his, in the name and the precious holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ my, my Lord, my God and my Saviour. Amen.